spent any time running a lash business, talking to other lash artists, or you're a part of any lash forum, then you know that there's this constant dialogue that rips cheap lash artists apart, like they're the scum of our industry. Yet I'm betting that the majority of you listening probably fall into that cheaper side of our industry. You probably looked at the other lash artists in your area and based on a quick judgment of whether they were better than you or not, you then priced yourself maybe five, 10, 15, $20 lower than them, thinking that you're going to get an influx of clients. On today's episode, I'm diving into why someone else charging less, less than you is fantastic for your lash business. So you've probably heard quotes going around, maybe you see them on Instagram, that lash artists post trying to combat cheap clients or the messages they get that people can't afford them. So things like, if you think it's expensive to hire a professional, wait until you hire an amateur, or clients are spoiled by cheap prices, or my clients are leaving me and going to somewhere else cheaper, or good work ain't cheap and cheap work ain't good. And the kicker is, is that when you're not the cheapest in town, you then get highly insulted when a potential client calls you or DMs you or texts you and tells you once you give them their price point that you're too expensive or that they can't afford you. Like, God forbid that you have higher prices that are weeding out the lower price paying clients. So what we're gonna go over today are three points of why someone else charging less than you is actually really good for your business and really good for our industry. So if you have low prices versus high prices, then you actually have to have a, more, a higher volume of clients. So let me give you an example. If you are the higher price lash artist and let's say you charge $50 a fill and your competition, that cheap Susie down the street who just charges $40 a fill, how dare she? She actually, to make $2,000 in a month, has to have 50 appointments in a month to make $2,000 because she charges $40 an appointment for a fill. That's about 12 to 13 clients in a week. Whereas you, on the other hand, if you charge $50 a fill, then you only need to take about 40 appointments a month to reach that same $2,000, which equates to about 10 clients a week. So each week you're taking two to three less clients than Susie down the street who's charging less prices. So the higher you charge, the less clients you actually need to make the same amount. She has to work harder in order to make the same amount of money that you do. Also, let us not be fooled that we look at all of our competition, we look at all the other lash artists in the area, and we make this assumption that they know what they're doing that they know how to run a business, that they all of a sudden have way more business knowledge than you do, by the way, you're listening to me and she may not be, but that all of a sudden they're the business expert and we have to emulate everything that they do because they look so successful according to their Instagram feed. Let's not be fooled to think that that is the example that we should be following and that their low price point means that you can't possibly charge higher prices, and have that same level of success. Second point is the nature of business in any industry is to have a variety of price points. It's what keeps industries alive. It's what keeps checks and balances. It's what keeps corporations and bigger companies from extorting money unnecessarily. That's a reason why there's a lot of regulation around, um, what's it called, uh, monopolies right? Where one company is the only one providing that service and they can charge whatever they want. They had an issue with this in the U.S. with EpiPens. EpiPens a couple years ago, my son has a nut allergy and this was a big ordeal that the company that produces EpiPens jacked up the price so much because they were the only ones that had the medicine, this life-saving medicine. And so they took advantage of it and they started charging ridiculous prices for EpiPens. And the public was outraged because it's a life-saving medication and people couldn't afford it. They couldn't afford to get life-saving medication. And so the government stepped in. They now have generic versions. EpiPen has come down in their pricing. 
but that's the nature of any industry is to have lower prices and higher prices. It's what keeps a market in balance. So the existence of someone else cheaper in your line of work is a part of any thriving industry. The error that most lash artists or lashpreneurs is thinking that having someone else cheaper in your area means that there's less clients for you. And that is not the case. That is a limiting belief. That is your own assumption that nobody will pay a high price. But by the sheer existence of somebody else charging more than you debunks that kind of rule, right? It debunks this assumption that nobody will pay premium pricing. But if somebody else in the world, in your area, exists to charge higher prices, then yes, there is a section of the market that will pay that. So I'm gonna give you a silly example to help kind of prove my point. Toilet paper. Really, Tara? Really? Business and toilet paper? Yes. So my parents, who I'm living with right now because we are in the middle of buying a house, refuse, <laughs> absolutely refuse to buy two-ply toilet paper. And some of you are like, yeah, that's me. I never buy two-ply. And some of you are like, oh, there's one ply out in the world, why the heck would you use it? I mean, we're talking like you go to the gas station and that kind of see-through toilet paper that you have to wrap 70 times around your hand in order to you know, get enough absorbency to get you clean, that's the kind of toilet paper that my parents get every time. And I've had conversations with them like, I'll buy the toilet paper, can you guys just stop getting this one ply? And it's only a couple bucks more, it's really not that big of a difference for toilet paper. They live in like a million dollar home and yet they don't see the need to spend the extra couple bucks to get like the pillowy soft, you know, bear hugging stuff or the, yeah, the bear hugging toilet paper in order to have this cleaner effect. Um, me, on the other hand, no matter what financial situation I'm in, I will always be buying Charmin Ultra Strong, Strong Mega Rolls every time. It's the Charmin with the red bag. Um, it is amazing toilet paper. If you wanted to have amazing toilet paper, that would be the toilet paper I'd recommend. Uh, but that's a show for another day. So who is more successful in the toilet paper industry? Is it the cheap bargain brand that's only one ply? Or is it the Sherman who charges more and has like thicker, more higher quality toilet paper? Well, some of you are probably thinking, well, Sherman, of course they charge more. They're both successful. They're both successful. The only difference is that the cheaper brand, in order to make the same amount of revenue, has to sell more toilet paper. But they have audiences with specific needs that they are both meeting. And the same thing can be said for lash artists. The cheaper toilet paper buyers value the price point. They don't care as much about the result or the experience as those of us that invest in Charmin Ultra Strong Mega Rolls. My parents apparently prefer to pinch pennies when it comes to their special spaces, while I, on the other hand, prefer to invest a few more dollars to make my special places, you know, feel special. Uh, it's really just a matter of preference and identifying each audience's buying decision, which you as a business owner should be doing as well. But Tara, how do I get high price paying clients? My current clientele won't pay higher prices. I'll lose all my clients. Yeah, because you likely attracted them based on price point alone. So here's two different ways you can tell whether your current clientele is only with you based on your price point. It's two different kind of tests you can do. One is when they first contacted you, whether it was Instagram, whether it was your website, whether it was they booked an appointment, whatever. Um, if they chose you based on price, it's because you gave them price right off the bat. If they land on your website and they see price first and foremost, they're not going to do any other research. They're going to make a snap judgment on whether you are affordable compared to who else they're researching. And if they booked right away, then you were the cheaper lash artist. Same thing if they direct message you on Instagram, hey, how much do you charge? And you give them their prices right away then you've only given them price to base the decision off of. And then some of y'all get really pissed off when they're like, oh, sorry, you're too expensive. Do you know my experience? And you know, you're complaining in lash forms that clients are cheap and you know, how dare they? And it's, it's, it's your fault and it's your responsibility to educate them on if there's anything else to base a decision on a lash artist on besides price point. And if you didn't do your job, in educating them on other factors to consider, 
then yeah, you're gonna be decided on price point alone. So if a client is researching you and price is the first thing they get when they're trying to research you, they will make a decision based on price alone. And if you're not the cheapest in town, then yes, you are going to lose that client every single time. Um, the other way that you can test this is by raising your prices. Tara, I'll lose clients. Yeah, because they're loyal to the deal and not to you. And you attracted that clientele with your low, cheap prices. So the way to test how loyal they are to you little risky, I get it, is to raise your prices. And there is a very specific time in your business that you do raise your prices, but that is not when you're struggling to get clientele. So how do you get high price clients in? By marketing to them. Oh, I know. God, here she goes with the marketing again, that Tara. Uh, which means that you have to market yourself differently than the cheaper lash artists down the street, which means Posting consistently offers and deals and discounts and specials and having that fill your feed is not the way you're going to attract high price paying clients. You're going to attract deal seekers who are only loyal to the cheap prices or the deal, which also means that you have to present yourself like a business. You can't be having hissy fits online all over your website you can't make it about you and how amazing you are you have to make it about the client and their experience and their pain points and their results and how you offer the solution for them so you have to have a seamless booking experience you have to have an established brand identity you have to have a website you, I'm sorry, I'm going to say this. It may be unpopular. You're not really in the game of running a business if you don't have a website. Ooh, hurts, right? Hurts. And you have to treat your clients not like clients, or you have to treat your clients like clients and not like the pushy friend who always gets her way. You have to have established business boundaries because you are running a business to make money. There's no other reason to be in business unless you're there to make money. Otherwise, it's a charity or hobby. And I don't think any of you listening to this want a charity or hobby. You likely want to be in business to make money. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to make it real simple for you. If you want to attract high price paying clients, you know the first thing you should start with? Have high prices. It can be as simple as that. If you want high price paying clients, they need to have high prices to pay, right? The majority of clients who are able to invest in self-care long-term, like getting eyelash extensions for more than just special occasions, assume that something is being sacrificed when something is cheap. And the thing that's being sacrificed is usually either the results or the experience. And I'm not just making this up. This, this is just the society we live in. For me and my business, the reason I was able to charge such high prices is because my ideal audience was those who went to the cheap artist in the first place or the cheap salon had a bad experience and I was the opposite of what their experience was. I got them great results and their experience was fantastic and I was consistent every time they came in and I treated it like a business and they respected me and I respected them. If you are willy-nilly, if you are all over the place, if you're inconsistent, if you don't have a consistent schedule, if they're feeling like customer service is sacrificed or that you're combative or you know high maintenance as a lash artist, they're going to be disillusioned by you. And as soon as you try to raise your prices, they're going to be like, that's not worth it. You have to provide a value that is somewhat equal to your price point. So back to our toilet paper example. The result of the cheap toilet paper is that you end up either using more toilet paper, right? Like the 70, you know, evolutions around your hand to try and get enough to be absorbent. When you can use less of the Charmin two ply to get the same results. So I'm actually using more of the product because it's one ply as opposed to less of the more expensive product. Or you suffer from not getting a clean result. Right? If I try to use the same amount of bargain brand one ply toilet paper as I do the Charmin two ply, I'm not going to get the same result. It doesn't have the same absorbency or texture. It may be scratchy or irritating or in the worst case scenario, not to get kind of graphic here, but it may disintegrate as soon as it touches some sort of moist matter. 
And I know I lost some of you by the fact that I just said moist and now you're off in a different land of how gross the word moist is. But stick with me here, I'm making a point. Whereas the premium toilet paper, I know I'm going to get a thoroughly clean result and my experience is gonna be this fluffy cloud in a special place. And here's the one thing about toilet paper for me that's very similar to eyelash extensions and this is a weird analogy, but I will pay a little bit extra to not ever think about toilet paper. What do I mean there? That means I don't wanna be thinking when I'm walking around, ooh, I don't think I got everything. Ooh, I don't think it's as dry down there as I thought it was gonna be. That toilet paper sucked. I don't wanna think as I'm using the product that, ooh, this is, this is not cutting it, or this is not doing its job. I don't ever wanna think about toilet paper. That's why I invest a little bit more for quality toilet paper, two-ply, Charmin, mega rolls, nice and fluffy, because then I don't ever think about toilet paper. It never comes up in my mind that I, other than when I have to order it, but Amazon, you know, Prime, you just auto set it up to where it gets delivered. I don't wanna be out in the world taking up brain space thinking about toilet paper and how I have to go find another bathroom to finish the job that the other one couldn't do. Same thing for lashes. You don't want a client thinking about their lashes outside of the appointment. You want them to go live their life as somebody who has amazing lashes, that they are just out enjoying the results. Not thinking, oh my God, my lashes hurt, they irritate, they, they are itchy, or I can't go out until my lash appointment because I look like such a hot mess, they didn't last, they're all over the place, they're twisting, I, I look ghetto. You don't want clients thinking about the result. you want them just experiencing life with the result. And that's worth paying a little bit more for. So the number one way that you can attract a high price paying clientele by, is by knowing what you provide to your clients that has nothing to do with your price point. This means that you need to identify a few reasons why your service and your business is different than Susie Cheap Ass down the street. It means that you need to communicate that often to excess, to not, I mean, think about the Lashpreneur. How many times do I talk about the Lashpreneur Society? Probably every two to three episodes. Sometimes it's a lot of episodes in a row. We have an entire time frame when I am opening up the registration that we talk about it a lot because I'm solving a problem and I want people to know that that's the problem I solve. I solve lash artist business problems. And I will talk about that, I will hone in on it, I want you to know that the Lashpreneur, that Tara Walsh, my name is equated to the solution to the lash business problem you have. I want you to be known for something as well. What problem do you solve? And then start every marketing aspect of your business is going to be focused on solving that particular problem. And you want to be known for it, you want to stand for something. You want to be a little polarizing and not just like everybody else, because then if you're just like everybody else, yeah, you're going to be solely based on price. And it also means that you cannot get offended when a client can't afford you because you did nothing to educate her on why you're different or why her investment is worth the value that she receives or the results that she re receives. It's like we just automatically assume clients should know why we're so much better than the cheaper lash artists down the street when we've done nothing to educate them or inform them of why we're different. And you also need to accept that your price point, especially at a higher price, is meant to weed out cheap clients. You do not want to build your business on a cheap clientele. It is not a long-term game plan. Think about the second a recession hits. If a client has to choose between making a car payment or even possibly losing their house, do you think they're really gonna be able to justify continuing to get eyelash extensions? No. So price sensitive clients are not a great market to build a long-term business on. Because if their income starts to tank or they're heavily affected by a recession, so will your business and so will you. So if you have a clientele that is less price sensitive or spending $50 every two to three weeks, even during a recession is not that much of a, a stretch for them, then you have a recession proof business. So you can charge whatever your heart desires, but just again, know that the lower the price you charge, the more volume of clients, the more work you have to do in order 
to make a, a decent living. Are you ever going to be wealthy in being a lash artist who charges cheap prices? Not without sacrificing quality of life. You risk burnout, you risk injury, and you risk hating your business because of how much time you spend in it just trying to make ends meet. And it takes just as much time and energy to market to cheap clients versus high price clients. So why wouldn't you get a greater result from your marketing by having a higher price service to draw in higher price clients? To work smarter, you need to understand how to market to your high price paying clientele and identify how you stand out amongst the competition so that price is not the number one consideration in choosing a lash artist. If price is a number one consideration for someone, just be okay with the fact they are not your ideal type of clients and that you don't want them in your business to begin with. So these are all strategies, business principles, and how-tos that I teach inside of the Lashpreneur Society. Here I go again talking about what I'm known for and what I love to teach on. Uh, on average, our students are charging an average of 66% more than industry average. That's right, our lash artists charge 66% more on full sets than the average lash artist in our industry. And it's because they're approaching their lash artistry as a business, not a hobby. And they're learning how to market themselves to any client at any price point. And if you want to be one of the, 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 if you want to be confident about the price that you charge and be one of the higher price lash artists in your area, if not the highest price lash artist, somebody's got to be it, right? then I encourage you to join me inside of the Lashpreneur Society. It's my business coaching program just for lash artists, where I teach you how to start and build and grow a business that you love and a life that you love. We will be opening the doors in the fall, and if you want to be notified first of when we do that so that you can hit the ground running, you need to sign up for the wait list. You can do so at thelashpreneur.com slash society, and I encourage you to join so that you can start confidently marketing yourself to any client at any price point. That's all I've got for you this week. Have a good one.